Hello, YouTubers. Well, I got the 3D printer out a little while ago, and uh, I thought, you know, as long as I've got it out, I might as well go ahead and tackle another project I had in mind, which is windscreens for uh, Binora back there, the dummy head binaural microphone. And uh, I, uh, I, I spent a little time um, dreaming up some ideas, and uh, I, uh, I'm quite pleased with the, uh, the overall response of the microphones. Uh, are you hearing a helicopter outside your house? I swear I hear a helicopter coming. Anyway, I'm quite pleased with the response of the microphones. I've done some recording at night and uh, it seems to be getting closer. Um, the sound quality and capture has been just amazing. In fact, what you're hearing building up in the background, an approaching helicopter, that's not outside your house. That's actually a recording I made with the uh, dummy head the other night. Let's listen as it passes by us. So that was a recording that I made late at night, and I just happened to get lucky and a helicopter flew by directly overhead. But listening to that um, in headphones later, I was uh, very pleased with the sensitivity and the quality of the recordings I can make with the binaural head. The problem is that I have to wait for the wind to not be blowing at all, because any wind across those uh, ear microphones gets picked up. So I set about um, designing windscreens for the binaural head. Um, I had this idea for magnetically mounted half dome kind of, you know, Princess Leia bun things. Uh, and so I uh, got into Tinkercad, which is still my favorite quick and dirty uh, modeler for 3D printing. And I designed up these um, frames for the windscreens. And then I went ahead and printed up a test set, a prototype, and uh, I went ahead and uh, tried to fit them on the head. All right, so I have finished printing the prototype, and I have it here. Now, the original design idea in my head is this is the primary frame that the material will go on. Now, I've got the material here. I haven't opened this yet. I'll go ahead and open this up so we can have a look at the material I'm actually working with. All right, so this is the stuff. <laughs> Fake animal fur. So this will be basically like a little dome that'll go over and break up the wind. So she's going to end up looking like uh, she's going to end up looking like Princess Leia and Chewbacca got busy. <laughs> but anyhow. The idea behind the frame is it's got pockets for these neodymium magnets, and I've pressed one into here with great effort. I need to uh, increase the diameter of these pockets about 0.3 millimeters, maybe 0.2. I'll probably go with 0.2 and see if that makes it an easier fit. Um, and I've got these little buttons here, and these have a bump and then a flange. And so I can cut a hole about the size of the di magnet diameter and press this through into the head, and that's going to hold a magnet there, or, well, somewhere. Now I'm trying to find the best orientation for this that doesn't produce a huge gap. I have reprinted, and I have test fit, and the magnets just snap right in there beautifully. And there's one in that. And uh, they have uh, plenty of influence. <laughs> See, I can actually bend the part trying to get that to pop apart. So plenty of grip. So these should work. But before I put the rest of the magnets in, I need to figure out my alignment for these. Where am I going to want to? How am I going to want to put these to get the best fit and the least amount of gap? least amount of pressure required and the best clearance of the ear and I think that's it right there. So I'm going to take, where is it? Ah, there it is. 
good old Sharpie into the hole that I made in there. I'm going to make a little dot and another little dot. Now I know right where to put my magnetic buttons on this side. And I'll do the same for this one. The head's different. Wow, that's weird. The head's different on this side. It's a bigger gap down here. They didn't make it symmetrical. Well, that's a problem. It fits so well on the other side. Hmm. I might have to go at a more extreme angle. I see what they did. This is different here. Hmm. I might have to really go at an angle on this one. I kind of want them to look symmetrical, so let's let's think about this. That'll still clear the ear. That's the best angle on this one. So I'm going to mark that, and then I'm going to go over to the other side again, and I'm going to see if... Okay. I'm going to see if I can get a good match with a similar angle so they at least look symmetrical. Yeah, I can. I guess I'll do that. Alright. Yeah, okay, that good. So that's good. So we'll do it that way. Surgery time. This just takes patience. Kind of go slow, make a nice clean cut. And there's a hole. Now I gotta pick the foam out of there. Where's my needle nose pliers? There. Okay. I don't want the foam pushing back on my magnet. Alright, moment of truth. Do my buttons actually fit and work? I don't want to make the hole too big because I want that to really grab this thing. There we go. Yeah, perfect. <coughs> there we are. And the frame should just grab. I think they'll hold it on there just fine. Okay, one down, three to go. All right, there we go. We have our magnets installed, and boom. <laughs> that just, that grabs real good. I mean, I can, I can move the head around with it. I can almost pick the head up with it, but they still come off. But they grab real good. Yeah. That's going to work. Okay. The next thing to do, put Binora out of the way, is I've got to figure out how to cut the material to make my dome shapes. Here's my new pet Tribbles. Yeah, right. Remember that Star Trek episode? They're done. Uh, I used good old super glue to uh, super glue the uh, edge of the material onto the frame. Oh, I got a spot there I got to do. But uh, yeah, nice dome shape, both of them here. And when I take the head, these just pop right on. They self-align and as you can see they're on there pretty good. I can move the head around with it and I actually have to grip it to pull it off. So, And it doesn't matter if I get one or the other. They're symmetrical so either or. It's no left or right. They just pop right on there. How about that? Oh, The only thing left to do is take it outside and test it in the wind. So there's just a little bit of a breeze this morning so far. It's going to get windier later, but as you can see, 
Yeah, it comes and goes. And presently you're hearing audio from my lavalier mic, which has dead cat material on it, and so my audio should be pretty clear. Uh, I found that it's quite effective at eliminating the wind noise. This is the audio from the dummy head. Right now you're hearing this with no windscreens. There's a little bit of a swirling air, not uncommon for the type of a breeze you might have out in the open. And you should be able to hear that there's wind noise across the microphones. Let's put on the windscreens and see if it makes a difference. So here's the windscreens, and they just magnetically clip on there, and they pop right in. And now, this is the noise with the windscreens. So hopefully that's a lot quieter, and my voice is nice and clear at this point. And I am, of course, standing behind the head. You're still listening to the dummy head audio. And uh, I will go ahead and just for the heck of it, walk around the head while I'm talking and uh, around behind the camera. So I'm a little ways away from it. There's still a pretty good breeze blowing. And I'm gonna come back around behind the head and uh, there we go. So that is a test of the windscreens. Well, after all that, I have this one strip of material left. What am I going to do with that? Oh, I've got an idea. So now that I've got the windscreens, I can really start putting it to use. Um, it's, there's been a lot of times that I've wanted to put it out and do some recording, but it's just been too windy. It's very windy this year in the desert. Uh, so now I think I'm ready to, uh, to take advantage of uh, the springtime activity out here in the desert. I've started to hear the coyote at night. I hope to capture a, a recording of them as they go by in the field. It's amazing sounding. Um, and birds and a few other things that I'll be recording just for my own thing. But I might put something together um, down the channel a little ways as far as maybe desert sights and sounds or something. I've, I'm recording a lot of media, capturing a lot of video and pictures. So anyway, um, I think it's a success. Uh, as you can see there, pretty darn effective at eliminating that low frequency flub, flub, flub of wind noise. And uh, yeah, it worked. All right, uh, next video, I, I, I'm gonna get into uh, get showing you the uh, Zactec CW Flea. Um, so that's this next week's project. We'll finish that up. Uh, until then, well, take care and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.